Okay, we're going to cover 1.4 quadratic equations and applications. So a lot of this section is going to be reviewing um, our factoring section, because in order for us to solve quadratics by factoring, we of course need to factor, right? So it says a quadratic equation in terms of x is an equation that can be written in the general form like such. So it's always going to be that trinomial. Now you could have a binomial and have this term missing or a binomial and have this term missing. What you won't have is this term missing, okay? So that's why it says a cannot equal zero. So this term cannot be missing. If that term is missing, the x squared term, then it's not considered a quadratic anymore, okay? It would just be a linear equation that you're solving at that point, okay? So you do have to have the x squared in there, but whether or not you have all three terms or just these two or just those two is irrelevant. They're all considered quadratics, okay? And there are multiple methods for solving quadratics. The one we're gonna cover today is factoring. Another one is called extracting roots. And then eventually, instead of factoring, you can do something called completing the square and then extracting roots, okay? So there are other ways to solve quadratics. We're gonna primarily focus on the factoring method to solve those quadratics. So um, one thing that's helpful to know is that um, when you do have a product, the only way that this product can equal zero is if this factor equals zero or the second factor equals zero. And so then the first factor would have to equal zero or the second factor would have to equal zero or both could be equal to zero, okay? So in order for us to solve equations using this property, essentially what we do is we rewrite the left-hand side of the general form as the product of two linears. What does that mean? That means you factor the left-hand side, okay? Once you factor the left-hand side, you're gonna set each one of those factors equal to zero, okay? So let's go over their first example. They have this, notice that it is not equal to zero. So they do go ahead and subtract three on both sides. And once they've done that, they end up with this quadratic uh, expression equal to zero, and then they factor it. Now they make it look like it's so easy and so short and simple to factor it, but we know better than it's a long process to factor this. So if I show you the steps, just using this in as an example, we should end up with the same result. So the two times the four is actually eight, if I take the square root of eight, um, I will get um, 2.8, which means I do only need to make my um, list go down to two. And so let me see here. Uh, okay. So then eight divided by one is eight and eight divided by four is two. And we know we have all of the lists because this is two point something or another, okay? Um, so then next we're going to um, find the factors. We are, it's a positive two times a positive four. So this is a positive eight, which means my greater numbers will be positives. And in order for me to multiply and get a positive, these would have to be positives as well, okay? And so which of those pairs is gonna give us nine? That would be the positive eight and the positive one. So what we do is we write two X squared and plus four, but this nine is gonna get split up into those two numbers. So instead of plus nine X, it'll be plus one X plus eight X, okay? And again, I always have a tendency of writing that other number too far. Okay, and then because it's four terms that we've turned it into, we do grouping. So this side has an X in common, giving me two X plus one. This I have to bring down the plus. They have a four in common, which gives me two X plus one. The two X plus ones match. And if I take those out, I'll be left with the X on the left and a four on the right. And so I do get the same factors, but it's not so simple like they make it look. There's some work going on behind the scenes to get those factors, okay? So now that we have that, then it's just a matter of setting this factor equal to zero and then setting this factor equal to zero. And if I do set this, I have the minus one on both sides, getting two X equal to negative one. 
And then I divide by two on both sides and I get X equal to negative one half. Over here, I'm gonna minus four on both sides. And so I do get X equal to negative four. So what that means is that both of these values are solutions and they do say to check them in the original equation. So here's the, um, oh, they didn't do that, but let's do it, okay? So here's the original equation. Um, I'm gonna show you how to plug in values. So the first thing that you wanna do, let's not um, mess with my visualizer. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna store this first X value. So I'm gonna say negative one half, and I'm gonna hit store as, um, what is going on with this thing? Okay, there we go. So we're gonna say the store button, and then we're gonna hit X for the variable. Don't hit it too many times or it won't be an X anymore. You have to keep going until you get X again. Oh, I just went too far, just once, okay, and it's X. And I'm gonna hit enter. What it means or what it did is that every time I type in X, it's always gonna use negative one half for X. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in two X squared plus nine X plus seven. And if I get three, then this number checks out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do negative four stores X. And so instead of retyping that, I'm just gonna hit the up arrow until I get to that expression that I wanna plug the negative four into. And when I hit enter, it copies it. When I hit enter again, it will plug it in and I get three, just the same. So as long as I'm getting what's on the right-hand side, this is a good solution, okay? So both of these check out. Here's another one, notice that it's only two terms. So when it's two terms, all we do is factor out the greatest common factor. And then if we need to, we use one of those special formulas, right? So here we notice they have a three and an X in common. So they factored that out. Um, this does not have any squares or cubes. So you can't use the difference of cubes or the difference of squares or some squares. So we just set each factor equal to zero. Here you would only need to be dividing by three. So you get X equal to zero. And here you would add one and get two X equal to one, then divide by two and get that X equal to one half, okay? And again, you can plug those in. So I'm gonna say zero store is X. I get that and I'm gonna type in this expression, six X squared minus three X. And I should get zero and I did. So this one works. Now one half store, oops. I'm gonna get to the side, store is X. And then I'm gonna go copy that expression and then hit enter to plug it in and I get zero again. So it does both of them do check out. Now um, it says the zero factor probably applies only to equations written in the general form in which the right side of the equation is equal to zero. So all terms must be collected on one side before factoring. For instance, this equation is incorrect to set each factor equal to eight. What you'd have to do is you'd first have to multiply that side out. And then you'd have to move over the eight. I'm gonna combine those like terms. And then you'd have to factor this. And then you can set each factor equal to zero. And that's how you would get your two solutions, okay? So it's just letting you know that you can only do the zero factor property when it is equal to zero, okay? Not when it's equal to any other number. Okay. Another thing, it says after simplifying the equation, factor the left side and then use the zero factor property to find all the solutions. Try to solve the equation correctly. I already did it, so you don't have to do that. <laughs> um, so now we get to our two practice problems. So here's the first one. Um, the first one is um, this one here. So we notice that it's not equal to zero. So I am gonna have to add four on both sides of that equal sign so that I get zero over here 
And over here I have x squared plus 4x plus 4. And so if I take the number 1 times 4, I get positive 4. The square root of 4 is just 2, so I'm only going to go to 2. 4 divided by 1 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Which of these, the middle number, notice, is positive. So the bigger numbers will be positive. But I did positive times positive, which gave me a positive, right? So it means these factors also would be positives. So which group gives me 4? That would be the 2 plus 2. So then um, because I don't have a number in the front, it's just a one, I can jump straight to the factors and just say x plus two and x plus two. It's only when there's a number in front that you have to split the middle term and then go for it that way. I could also do that here, split it, and I will still end up with this in the end. It'll just take a little bit extra steps, okay? But I can shortcut when there's no number in front. So then once I have that, I would set um, this factor equal to zero and this factor equal to zero. And in, this is the same equation. So in both cases, I would just minus the two over and I'd end up with X equal to negative two. So negative two would be the only solution. You don't need to rewrite it like repeatedly, even though it's a repeated solution, okay? Um, for a problem like this, um, the first thing you always want to do when solving equations is eliminate the fractions. And the way you eliminate fractions is by multiplying by the common denominator. And since the only denominator I have here is 9, I'm going to multiply every single term by 9. Okay. What that does is over here it cancels and I just have 1x squared. Now I have minus 9x minus, I think that's 144, but I'm not sure. Nope, 162. Nine times 18, and then equal to zero. Now this one is already equal to zero, so we don't need to move anything over, but one times negative 162 is negative 162. And so I'm gonna have to break that up. But let me see what the square root of 162 is. Um, it's about 12 point something. So I am going to have to make this list all the way to 12. So let's start going through the thing. 162 divided by 1 is 162. Um, 162 divided by 2 is 81. 162 divided by 3 is 54. 162 divided by four is a decimal. Divided by five is a decimal. Divided by six is 27. Divided by seven is a decimal. Divided by eight is a decimal. Divided by nine is 18. Divided by 10 is a decimal. Divided by 11 is a decimal. Oops, divided by 12 is also a decimal. Now, I do have a negative 162, but, and the middle symbol is a negative. So that means that the bigger numbers are going to be negative. And because I want to end up with a negative, it means the smaller numbers will be a positive. So that when I multiply positives times negatives, I end up with negatives, right? Now, which one of these will give us a negative nine. It looks like it'll be this pair, positive nine and negative 18. So I'm gonna break this up into positive nine X and then negative 18 X. And I'm not gonna write the equal zero because I mean, I can, but I'm not factoring this part. I'm just factoring this, okay? So if I cut this in half here, I'm gonna factor out an X. I'm going to bring down my minus sign, and I believe I can factor out an 18, because 18 times 9 is 162. Now remember, you're factoring out a negative 18, so this becomes positive x and positive 9, which it should be, because these should match, right? That's the whole point, so that you have those in common, and then you have x minus 18 left over, okay? And then once you have it factored, you can set this factor equal to zero and this factor equal to zero. And so for the top, you'll minus nine over. For the bottom, you'll add 18 over. 
and you get your two solutions there. So you do have two solutions for this problem. Okay, but hopefully that's enough. Really, it's going to be is essentially another homework assignment on factoring. Um, it's just because you're solving an equation, you have to make sure that it's equal to zero before you factor. And then at the end, you have to set each factor equal to zero. Okay, so there's like a little pre-step at the beginning and a step at the end extra. But for the most part, it's another um, time for you to practice that factoring. But that's it. That's all I have in this section.